Welcome to the video lessons about mutually exclusive and non mutually exclusive event. Okay. I have a jar and inside the jar I have four red balls numbered from one, two, three, four. Five blue balls, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and two green balls, ten and eleven. Okay. I close my eyes and put my hand here and mix it, then randomly throw a ball. Okay, what is the probability of drawing either a red or green ball? Okay, probability either red or green. So, how many red? We have four, total eleven. Green, two, green, total eleven. So if I add this, six over eleven. Or another way, I can do this. P of red plus P of green. So P of red. 4 out of 11, green 2 out of 11, I get 6 over 11. So basically, probability of drawing either a red or green ball is 6 over 11. Okay, from this example, uh, we can get addition rule for mutually exclusive event. So this is the general formula, P, A, or B, equal P, O, A, plus P, O, B. Okay, so if I show these two events in the Venn diagram, so I get, this is the, okay, I do. This is the Venn diagram. So this is event A, then event B. Okay, probability A, probability B. So these two events are disjoint. They don't overlap. So this is called mutually exclusive event disjoint basically so as a summary mutual exclusive event we can describe two or more events are mutually exclusive if they cannot occur at the same time they have no common outcomes so this is the formula for the mutual exclusive event Okay, I am going to give example non mutually exclusive event. So again, I put my hand here and close my eyes, randomly draw a ball. Okay, this time question is what is the probability of drawing either a red or even numbered ball? Okay. P, red, or even, equal. How many red? Again, we have 4 over 11. Even. What are the even number of balls? This is even. Okay, this is even. 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 So, I have 5 even numbered ball, 5 over 11. So when I add this, I get 9 over 11. Okay, first of all, is this correct? It is not correct, because, so, these two balls, 2 red 2 and red 4, both red and even. That is why in, we counted twice. 
So we have to erase this. We have to subtract because we count it twice. Two both are both even and red. So I get 7 over 11. So this is basically P red and even. Okay. So from this example we can get general formula addition rule for non mutual exclusive event. So P A or B or we can show this way P O A plus P O B minus P A and B. So this is intersection. So if I if we show this in and Venn diagram, okay. So this is the Venn diagram. Again, this is sample space. So this is event A. So event B, A, and B. This shaded area. Okay, I draw here P, A, and B. So event A and event B overlap. They intersect each other or we can say joint event. So they have there are elements in common. So event A and event B have elements in common. So if I summarize this, two or more events are non mutually exclusive if they can occur at the same time and they have common outcomes or element. I am giving another example for non mutually exclusive event. Question is in a group of 21 people, 13 people can speak English, 9 people can speak Chinese, 2 people can speak neither English nor Chinese. Question if a person is selected at random, find the probability that the person can speak English or Chinese. For convenience, I use E for English, C for Chinese. Since there are total of 21 people and two people can speak neither English nor Chinese, then the number of people who can speak English or Chinese will be N, E, or C will be 21 minus 2. So 19 people can speak English or Chinese. Okay, so what is the probability P, E, or C equal N, E, or C N O S. Okay, N O S total number of people 21. This is 19. So, so I get the probability that a person can speak English or Chinese is 19 over 21. This is the sample space, the set of all possible outcomes. Okay, second question. Find the probability that the person can speak both English and Chinese. As you remember, this is the general formula for addition rule for non mutually exclusive event. This is for number first one, second one for probability. Okay, if we apply this general formula for our problem so this will be n e or c equal n o e plus n o c minus n e and c okay so n e and c means number of people who can 
speak both English and Chinese. So this one we calculated already 19. So number of people speak English 13 plus number of people speak Chinese 9. So minus N, E and C. When we rearrange this formula, we get N, E and C equal 3. Okay. So, three people can speak both English and Chinese. What is the probability? Okay. P, E and C equal N, E and C over N O S. This is 3. This is total number of people 21. So we get 1 over 7. So probability that a person can speak both English and Chinese equal 1 over 7. Okay, we can show this information on the Venn diagram. Okay, so if I draw the Venn diagram, so this is sample space. Okay, NOS 21, total number of people. Okay, if I show this is the people who can speak English, I know E equal 13. So this is the people I know Chinese equal nine people can speak Chinese and this is the intersection area this so we calculated this three so three people basically this one can speak both English and Chinese okay so we can do more so this is red circle is 13 so 3 if you subtract 3 we can calculate 10 here 10 is basically here so 9 is green all green if i subtract 3 i get 6 here so two people can neither speak english nor chinese okay so third question, if a person selected at random, find the probability that the person cannot speak Chinese. Okay, so nine people can speak Chinese out of 21 people. So N not C will be NOS minus NOC. Basically, this is 21 minus 9, so I get 12. 12 people cannot speak Chinese. Okay, so probability not C will be again. Okay, and not C over N O S, so 12 over 20. One. So, this is the probability that a person cannot speak Chinese. Okay, thank you very much for watching my video. Bye.